Right now I'm here paneling a little pen for Candy and Chance to be out here in the air for a while. Hopefully we'll see Chance just running around a little bit and getting his legs worked up to be a strong stallion. We are going to go ahead and give Candy and Chance some turnout time. We made a little pen back here. That way it's easy to get them run out and also get them put back in when nighttime is coming around. Um, this is just kind of so Candy can stretch your legs a little bit. Chance can have a chance to get outside and we can also get in there and scrub the stall clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them moved out. Uh, Candy is very protective over her baby, so I won't be able to get up there to touch the baby. I'm pretty much just gonna try to get her pushed out of the stall. He still needs to figure out how to get out of the stall. There you go, kid. There you go. Good job. So right now they're just grazing. Uh, the baby chance is trying to figure out how to graze. Um, he is, he does have a couple teeth that are starting to come in. So he might be able to start munching on grass right about now. And he is about a week old. Um, the reason that we had to get this set up is because Candy is still pretty much unhandled. I did get the chance to work with her a little bit when she was over in the training barn. We worked a little bit on leading and everything, but every time I put the halter on, I had to do it inside the chute because uh, she still likes to strike out quite a bit when you first make that contact with her. So she definitely has a long way to go with her training. Maybe even next week, I'll probably pull both of them inside the training board if that is okay with Dr. Nancy and she approves it and see about getting her handled more. And then I could even do a little bit more imprint training with him. Uh, maybe even start teaching him how to lead, especially now at a young age is the best time to do it. So when they get older, it's a lot easier. So this is Sheila here. Sheila actually did ride through the auction when we got her back in January, I believe January, yeah. Um, so when we got her back here, I did my um, training evaluation on her and there were still a couple things I wanted her to learn before we got her back on her saddle. And she has been doing really well. So I'm gonna throw the saddle on real quick. I'm gonna do a couple things that I would normally do with a horse if I threw a saddle on it for the first time. And then David is gonna come in and hop on. And I'm gonna have her lead rope while he is doing that. Um, he's just gonna start with fake ons on both sides. And if she checks out and she's doing good, I'm gonna have him throw a leg over and we're gonna see how she does. Are you ready? Cause I'm gonna put this up on your back, okay? She's actually not doing too bad, but she's still acting like she's really unsure of the saddle itself. So we might not put you on today. I'm just gonna test her out, see how she does. But we'll know in a second if we're gonna put you on. 
So when I pull this cinch tight, she might have a reaction. I wanna make sure that it's actually tight. So if she does decide that she wants to buck, it doesn't come off. If you have a horse and you saddle them up for the first time, and you don't have that cinch tight and it takes off and starts bucking, and that saddle rolls underneath of it, it's gonna make it a lot harder to saddle it up in the future. So you wanna make sure that you get it nice and tight. That way it does not roll underneath of her. So I'm gonna walk her a couple steps. She's got that hump on her back like she's thinking about bucking. I don't know if you could see that behind the saddle there. The back of that saddle's off her back pretty far. So I could tell she's thinking about it. So yeah, David, we not, we, we're probably not gonna put you up there today. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn her loose. I do this with all the horses that I'm starting or if they haven't had a saddle on. As far as I know, she's only had 10 rides on her. So I'm gonna, treat, I'm gonna pretty much treat this as a start or a restart. That's why you want to get the saddle tight. If it wasn't tight, it would have already rolled. And once she settles down, that's great. I'll get her caught and I'll take the saddle off. So right there, she pretty much acted like she's never had a saddle on her back before. I know she has because I saw her ride through auction. But these are things that we need to figure out before we just throw someone up there. What do you think, David? You can ride that out? <laughs> so we are gonna have to do a little bit more work to get her more comfortable with the saddle. She hasn't had one on since. I think actually the training evaluation I originally did on her, I put a saddle on her, but she didn't do that. So it's been, it's been about a month. Um, and I did have that little black synthetic one on. So this is a different feel and it has a back cinch on it, which might explain why she was bucking. But we're gonna have to keep building on that. Um, I won't put David through getting on her today, but tomorrow when I pull her out, maybe we'll do the same thing, throw the saddle up on there, and uh, I'll have David come over and do some fake ons with her, just to get her used to a little bit of weight in the stirrup. But now that I got her caught, I'm gonna go ahead and take the saddle off and put her up. She heard grain, she's licking and chewing. We had a phone call yesterday, Dr. Nancy, and Julie has paid Ginger's adoption fee so that you can adopt Ginger. She did say you need to change Ginger's name to Darlin' because that's all you call her. So, but she has already paid Ginger's adoption fee. Well, that is very sweet. Thank you very much. So um, with that, um, I will probably adopt Joey with her to give her a buddy at home even though I already have a donkey just in case Jenny the donkey's like I'm only going to live with my sheep so she can have a buddy and they can hang out together on plenty of free roaming grass. So thank you. Thank you Julie. I'm officially full on animals so thank you all very much but I am going to stop at that with Chatty and Ginger and Joey so. We are ready to head to the hill to finish the last few horses we need to do intake x-rays on. And uh, from there, we'll have completed our extended intake, which is wonderful because again, we have more time to work them slower and pick up on a lot of those issues. And I'm gonna go get my sweater because it's cold. It's cold. Like it, it's weird, it looks amazing. It traps you in, it but traps you. But the other, yesterday morning there was ice on the windshield and I know I'm always the one complaining about the weather, but I get affected by it. Don't I'm, worry, I'm still wearing my blankie fleece, so I can't say yeah. anything. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
this is one of the horses in from the April auction. Outwardly looking, not in bad physical body condition wise. But outwardly, the only thing, if you're looking, yes, the uh, hoof is a little flared out. You notice that it's a little too steep of an angle on this left front, which would be what we call a form of club foot. So outwardly, this horse doesn't look that bad. You're like, okay, this horse may have a pretty good chance. Uh, 20 years old, okay, still got a chance. Unfortunately, when we done x-rays, and I went back, we x-rayed on Wednesday. We let them settle over the weekend. And this horse, actually, that coffin bone is eroding in there on P3. And again, just by looking outwardly, you would not think that, but the x-rays don't lie. Because then when I pulled him up again today, I literally cringed again because, again, looking at him in the pasture, you think, oh, he's got a pretty good chance. He can, you know, pretty decent quality of life. Unfortunately, erosion of the coffin bone is not a quality of life. It's gonna keep getting worse and worse and worse, unfortunately. So um, that's a lot of these, they look, outwardly but the old age and there's a lot of hidden issues that you don't know until you dig deeper do the x-rays the physical exams he's definitely a horse that the kill buyers would have shipped like he's in good weight um and that's one thing that you know sometimes when we rescue these horses we don't know like at the auction if we saw him go through the ring we would have no idea that he has this problem but we rescue as many as we can within that slaughter price range because they could get shipped to Mexico. Um, thousands of horses have been shipped this year and you know it's it's heartbreaking but we have to do what's best for each and every horse. And looking at him you wouldn't know that you know his coffin bones falling apart and he's suffering but we can be thankful that he didn't go to Mexico or Canada. So last week we were out here and it was it was kind of sad looking at this herd of horses we got from the auction because it's like okay this one has this problem and that one has this problem and we've just tried to keep them comfortable and and um you know here and, and enjoying life as much as they can but the reality is there there's chronic medical problems and it's kind of crazy and typically we wouldn't like you know go into so many details of you know what we're seeing in these horses but most of the horses we got at the last auction needed euthanasia, serious problems. The five horses in this field right now, they are all 20 plus years old. A few of them are 25 plus years old. And I know somebody had picked up during the live feed of like I'd mentioned the word unfortunately. Statistically, the older they are, the more likely there's going to be issues we can't fix. This group is a living example of that. Uh, for the Belgium, we have non-weight bearing lameness with arthritis changes that way we can't really keep her comfortable it's a quality it's painful i mean at the auction like we knew that there was major issues but Hello, we've just been letting them be horses out here and trying to give them a good a good few last days um but there's there's major medical problems yeah and this, this one here 20 plus osteoarthritis again it's the point of when i go back we took the x-rays on wednesday i went back and looked at them again and again kimberly can vouch when she heard me we were like oh because they're just so bad on the quality of life issues with them and again every one of these are sweet as they can be in here so that's like the gray mare here she doesn't look too bad outwardly but we know grays tend to have um melanomas unfortunately she has pretty extensive melanomas underneath her tail head there's one small hole now it's not draining hers could rupture out at any moment and i don't want her to go through that if all possible you know so again i don't want any of these horses to suffer with things that we can't fix and i'd rather end on a good note they've been out on pasture it's pretty and sunny then when they're down and they can't get up or they're suffering because of um, something that was going to happen that we could prevent it if you have an older horse, work with your veterinarian, talk to your veterinarian about what is the best time to say goodbye to your older horse. And don't wait until your horse is stuck in a snowstorm and can't get up. Like it's, you have to do the best you can for your horse. And there's so many horses that, you know, we see at auctions, especially like these older horses that, you know, just, their owners should have done the right thing and they didn't. And so now we're stepping into the, that role and it's hard, um, but just, it's it is kind of mind boggling looking around at these horses and you know knowing what their x-rays are is just, there's so many problems. And sometimes the best thing we can do is, is love them and, and, and say goodbye and be thankful they didn't go to slaughter. And I'm so thankful to all of our donors who 
understand this philosophy and, and support rescuing horses like this. Rescue isn't always easy, but you know, we rely on those, those happy stories, but this is the reality of rescue and a lot of our viewers are like, oh, we don't wanna see it. The weekly episodes is the reality of horse rescue. And sometimes it is about making those hard decisions because their owners walked away. So this is Willie, he's a Rocky Mountain Cross. We're just gonna do a few x-rays on him to make sure he's healthy. See what his back looks like. He's got the cleanest set of joints so far for the older horse out of this group. Seems yeah. Like he's, uh, healthy. Yeah, this one for his age has the best x rays, honestly, all year for taking into account. So uh, he's probably a Rocky Mountain cross based on his height. He's too tall to be a true Rocky Mountain. So I am gonna swab him. We will test for strangles. I'll go ahead and pull his Coggins blood. I will not vaccinate him today without high fever. So I don't wanna overwhelm his immune system with that right now, but I will test strangles. Coggins won't be affected by the fever. Uh, unfortunately, I suspect he has the same thing, which would probably be the strangles that Mouse had. But again, he's gonna be in isolation. He can hang out, we'll let it run its course. And so that's a good thing. We are uh, just getting ready to do um, Cam's intake x-rays, kind of see what baseline where we're at, and we'll go from there. I'm more focused because he's got some stripe marks. I can't, I'm trying to figure out if they're whip marks or not on his other hip, so that's why I was looking so closely. Yeah, there's a scar on the back of his leg there. Which one? The other side. It's oh. that. Okay. I took a photo of the whip marks, but where they're over on his hip again, because he just, he's a good little uh, standard bred, but again, he's not had the best life here lately by looking at some of those things. So just make a note of his scars, uh, like his cheek teeth are sharp and need to be floated later on, uh, little details, just to jog my memory that I can type it all into the computer when I get back. So this poor horse, it has just battle scars all over its body externally. Um, and you can just see whip marks like on his legs, his stomach, he has little scars. It's like, and they're whip marks from like a buggy perspective. Like it, it's, somebody was just like whipping him like this. I have any words. There's a little bump right there, but if he's hit the road before, that would explain that little remodeling there. But again, he's good compared to everything else reference point we've seen, so yeah. The outside of his body has more scars than the inside. Yes. Under three for sure. May I <laughs> Maybe see? Maybe even younger. May I see your two first? I, I couldn't see if she had three sets. She might even be younger than that. Okay, okay, it's okay. Oh, we are, baby, we ain't even got our three-year-old teeth yet. Yeah, two. Yay, I guessed right. So we're gonna bypass x-rays on her just because of how nervy she is. Yeah, she's like, please don't make me do that. We will vaccinate you. We shall return you to the wild. So she's probably just an unhandled two-year-old. Well, she's got a really good mind on her. Yeah. Like, she's not super reactive. She thinks. Yeah. Yeah. She just needs to learn to trust. Coming on four. He's a baby. We're too. getting our four-year-old teeth. Dr. Nancy poking on you. I am. <gasps> What is, oh, what is she doing? What is she doing that for? What on earth? How rude. I know, and I had to poke again. Ugh. Oh, wow. Well. I'm totally rude today. She got it figured out. Yeah, we go. She's just a vampire. That's what I she know. is. She's a vampire. She takes your blood. Yes, she does. Everybody, she wants everybody's blood. I really like that Dr. Nancy takes the time when she's doing donkey. Uh, castrations like uh, this morning we did one. She used stitches. It's very nice. 
Take care of those bleeders. Just makes me paranoid about infection. That's why I do exceed. That, that's the one time I will use exceed. So after that one poor, even though these have been vaccinated, the one horse I had brought to me tied off with fish and line after castration, I'm like, no. Well, um, we finished another phase of auction intake mm -hmm. and um, there was one horse I think is a prime example of at auction. I think we would have said, just looking at him, he's probably got a lot going on. If we didn't have the full circle life uh, horse sheltering philosophy, we probably would have said, well, he probably has got way too many problems. He might need euthanasia. We can't get him. And the poor horse is Gus. Whip lashes all over his body. He's just a mess and scars. And um, what happened when we took the x-rays? He actually has one of the cleanest set of x-rays of all the horses we've taken, which is kind of surprising. He's 16 years old. He is freeze branded. So we do know his exact age. He, he beat the odds because all of our other older horses had multiple, even very unsuspecting issues than we found on x-rays. So it was a good surprise to find him and him being in that good of shape. So he's had a little trauma experience and said with the whip marks, some scars. So we'll give him some time to settle in and get used to us being nice to him and see how he does. And I think that, you know, just horses like him go to show, like a lot of times people are like, well, don't get the ones that need euthanasia. It's a waste. And I, it's not. These horses are going to horrific situations and we're stepping in to be responsible. That would be like you owning your own animal and when it comes time for it to be humanely euthanized, you have kind of the same philosophy of, oh, it's just a waste to do that, send it to an auction. We're trying to break that cycle. We're trying to say somebody's got to step in and be responsible. And um, when we go to auctions, we rescue horses regardless of their condition. We don't know their outcomes. Sometimes it's blatant. When you've had 20 years of experience, you're like, eh, this doesn't look good, but, there are so many times that horses come here and I'm like, they're not, they're not gonna make it. And they surprise us. And so we always love finding horses like that. Elvis really likes the girls and we have a lot of, a lot of trouble. He's choking himself because he was trying to put his head through the fence to impress, impress the little filly there. And um, we can't have him next to any girls. So now we're gonna have to move them out. Sorry, Elvis, you gotta say goodbye to them. Go on. Come on, I know we thought you'd like hanging out here, but not with Mr. Elvis. Let me put these lower in case they decide they want to fall off. So they headed off to uh, go take stuff down to the hospital and um, we had to deal with Elvis but then one of the aprons fell out um, hopefully nothing else did I think we're gonna see if they actually know it's missing so I think we'll see if they actually know that it's missing it fell out Oops. so we won't say anything and we'll we'll give them a test to see if they'll see if uh, they know that they are short yeah Okay, boys. Or they're just like not thinking about it. So did we get everything put away? Yeah, uh, pretty much. I think everything's either in the med room or the treatment room. There's nothing that's not under lock and key. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> everything accounted for. Let's put it that way. Yes, all of the important things are where they belong. Okay. Everything got put away? Everything yes, I'm just for. feeding. So apparently they think everything is put away and under lock and key. Um, things accounted for. Accounted for. That's not reality. So um, Dr. Nancy has a, a special, special um, traveling companion. Yes. Bob is going to appear tomorrow morning with the missing, missing equipment that fell off the cart and they didn't realize it. So. We'll you're see in, if they realize it before they're in staff meeting. Make sure my computer's off. What are you going to say there? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. So, all right, as long as everything's accounted for and wrapped up, we should be good Everybody's to call it a day.
So we're going to be doing something different at staff meetings um, going forward. Um, Angela is assigned John to lead out this morning, so he's going to lead out in staff meeting. And then when he's done, he gets to assign one of his fellow co-workers to lead out the next staff meeting. So it's all you, John. Hello. <laughs> OK. So what do we have for today? Okay. Yeah. We're going to be working some horses. I already got a few in the training barn. Um, we got them up because their pastures got sprayed yesterday, so they get to go out this afternoon. But they're all on the ferry list, so they get to stay in another night. Oh, nice, nice, nice. All right. Dr. Nancy? We're going to finish intake on our last auction horses. And then um, everybody's doing well. Banjo's doing well this morning after his um, castration yesterday. Uh, we'll see if we get to our new children in the intake bar and the owner surrenders and um, go from there. Perfect, perfect. Anything else? Do you have anything Yes, else? we do have a new employee I want to introduce. So this employee works night shift. So night shift's a little rough on him, okay? Okay. I don't know anything about this. Of course it's Bob. Of course it's Bob. This is night shift Bob. And one of jo Bob's functions is, is to roam the ground and find things that are where they're not supposed to be. This apparently fell out of the cart yesterday. So that's why we were asking, is everything accounted for? So I remember hanging up two of them. I don't remember hanging up two Yes, so Bob is, you know, he's like a little lurker here. He's night shift. So Bob is responsible for reminding us to double, yeah, I was gonna say he had a rough night last night, to double check things and again, just make certain everything is done when we leave. So, but yeah, Bob will be hanging around, so we'll see Bob more and more. It's like uh, John's chickens, so. That's great. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. He's, he's trying to give you a hand here. He's like, you need a hand. I didn't know we brought all three, okay? <laughs> Maybe you needed the extra hand. Hey, um, thank you. <laughs> Can I take his head too? Because I think I need that as well. <laughs> it's not came off yet. This is actually the, the skeleton I had at school for comparative anatomy when I was teaching the bones. So I would explain to the kids, you know, I started with the dog model and I would teach them on the human so that way they could relate to their self. And that's why I, when he's hanging around, his little collarbone, his clavicle is highlighted purple because dogs don't have one. Cats have one occasionally, but our horses don't have one. So that was a little reminder of our four-legged creatures don't have that because it's used for climbing and four-legged creatures don't need that movement. So Bob's been around a while. He's got some issues. He's got some hip issues. He needs uh, hip replacements on both hips. So his leg falls off occasionally. So. Thanks, Bob, for uh, doing the night shift and finding the missing equipment. Yeah, it was pretty heavy. That's why he broke Good his job, hand. Good job, Bob. I had had some really nice signs made out there for uh, alongside the road so people could, you know, see that there was, you know, Horse Plus Humane Society. And those signs were taken down by an ex-employee and we are, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of spring cleaning, a lot of tractor work. And I'm like, we need to get those signs up. Where are those signs? And yesterday I was like, where's the signs? They've got to be somewhere. So I've, I've searched all the normal spots that I could think of where the signs was. And I thought I had remembered seeing them up at the garage or around the garage area. Um, so I went up there to look and I figured, well, maybe, maybe they're in the back where the shed is. So I walked out behind the shed and we have a big burn pile back there that we're getting ready to burn. Uh, and I noticed something kind of white in there. It's like, that kind of looks like the corner of the sign. So I went over there and pulled on it. It was the corner of the two signs that had been put in the burn pile. Somehow they got thrown on a pallet or something and thrown, dumped into the burn pile. So luckily we hadn't burnt the pile yet. And they're metal. And there was a, one of the employees here knew, I guess, knew that yeah. they uh, were in there. The, but he, he, one of the employees remembered that he he saw them being put on a pallet with a bunch of other stuff on top of it. So and kinda... so it ended up in there. So I never told them to throw away the signs. They're nice signs. I've spent money on these signs. They're finally recovered um, out of the burn pile. Yay! We can get them up and where they belong. But 
I don't know why on earth uh, they would have put them in the burn pile because they're not. That's metal. That would have went on a scrap pile, not a burn pile. And like we wouldn't get rid of these. These are perfectly fine. Yep. Anyways, I'm glad they've been recovered. Like why would, why? I, 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 well, people were just probably picking up because we, they were in the shed over here. I do remember. But I was always like, we need to get um, them back up. Like and, I even, yeah. I even said that and one. I remember there was in the shed over there and we had cleaned the shed out last year and was just moving a bunch of stuff around and maybe they got miscommunicated and something well, happened, but so. we don't throw stuff away like no. that. <laughs> and I'm just glad they're safe. This is Ace. I adopted Ace late in 2021. Um, he did have some bony remodeling on his coffin bones at the top, and it didn't seem to affect him too much when I first brought him home. I was able to ride him just fine. He wasn't lame on him at all. And about six months ago, I rode him, and he was doing all right. And the next day, I went to get on him again, and uh, he was slimping pretty bad. So I went ahead and decided to retire him then and he was just a pasture pet. I kept up on his trimming, on his feet and all that, and, and the past couple times I've trimmed him, he's just been really lame for about a week afterwards, so I made the tough decision to bring him back. Um, it does affect his quality of life, having those issues with his feet. So with that, he will need to be euthanized. It was a tough decision, but ultimately it was the right decision because he won't be suffering anymore. And I forgot to mention, he is a Mustang. So this is his brand. And this is also his brand. I got this done a few months ago. It's uh, all the Mustangs I've owned in my life. And I left space because I'm planning on owning a whole lot more. Yeah, well, thanks for giving him a good home. And he looks, he looks good. He just those bones are falling apart. Yeah. Buddy. <laughs> it's always hard making the decision when it comes to your own animals with quality of life decisions um, of just knowing when, when is the right time. Like right now I have uh, my little uh, at home, a, a chihuahua that has heart failure. I've owned her for years and you know, it's like, at some point I'm gonna know, but you always wanna make sure when you're making these decisions, you're consulting with a veterinarian, you're looking at the best interest of that animal's life and not ever keeping an animal alive for your own gratification, meaning you would rather have that animal around, even if it is suffering, you're gonna justify it in your mind because you want that animal there, you don't wanna give it up. And um, it's just a hard, hard fact of, of owning an animal is you have to do what's very best for that animal and your veterinarian will be able to guide you in those decisions. Ace was, uh, was the alpha in my pasture at home. Um, he always made sure he ate first and uh, kind of picked on everybody else too. So. <laughs> oh, I knew they were going to be. I was expecting more changes, honestly. It's just interesting how just a little bit of bony changes can change a horse significantly. Um, so it's, it's something to to always, you know, like we take these x-rays and sometimes the horse might seem like it's fine, but a little bit later, arthritis is something that changes a lot. Yeah, what's uh. up with this? What, what is that? Uh, Matthew McConaughey is one of the other people besides Angela and Tani that are allowed to interrupt me when I'm in the middle of paperwork and shelter love. Oh. So anytime he's in the Nashville area and wants to swing by and visit, he's more than welcome to. <laughs> so so if, if we're really busy, we can't disturb unless the animal's dying, unless it's me. So, I mean, that, and I didn't request that. She just 
put it on there. That was so nice. And then apparently he can just come in at any time. Doesn't matter. What happens if you're in a surgery? He can come in during surgery as well. He can come in yes, surgery. he can come in any time. Yes, he is welcome at any time, no matter what you, is going on. You will make you will make we time will for make him. Time, yes, he just has to sign the liability. That's important. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, get the liability for. We, we don't want him to. Yeah, we're gonna get the liability taken care of, and then he can come interrupt you. Yes. How's that? That will work. That will work. <laughs> he is a great motivational speaker. Most people know him as the actor, but he does do some great motivational uh, talks now. And I used to use his videos a lot for the kids at school when I was teaching. So Ooh, Matthew's a great all-around person. So come visit us at Horse Plus. <laughs> we are getting four horses surrendered right now. So Kimberly, David, and I are going ahead and just getting everything ready. We're making sure the stalls have shavings, we're making sure they have water, and we're making sure they have hay. Um, if I understand correctly, this person that is surrendering these horses is also donating their trailer and a bunch of tack to us as well. We got all four off the trailer. One of them did not like coming off the trailer. Um, it kind of blew out of there. Um, just walking it over here, handling it, it does seem like it does need a lot of work. With any horse that we get though, um, Dr. Nancy is going to look them over, see what they need, see what the quality of life is. And if they're good and they don't have any real issues going on, then they'll go into the training program and I'll get to start working with them. We've never had anybody come and surrender horses and then surrender all their tack. So we got saddles, we've got supplements, uh, feed, um, just kind of a whole bunch of things. And it's, it's just amazing. And we're so grateful for it all this beautiful horse trailer, it's, it's amazing. And I feel really sorry that they had to give up their horses, but I am so grateful that they chose to bring them here. Dr. Nancy's gonna do everything she can for them. Some of them do have some health problems we've learned about, but we're gonna make sure that these horses get everything they need. And I'm so incredibly uh, grateful for such a generous donation. And she also made a, a financial donation as well, so. Um, even though it's hard giving up your horses, always making sure you do the right thing is so important and um, we just really appreciate their generosity.